George Fox, The Journal That all may know the dealings of the Lord with me and the various exercises, trials and troubles through which he led me. I was born in the month called July in the year 1624 at Drayton in the Clay in Leicestershire. My father's name was Christopher Fox. He was by profession a weaver, an honest man, and there was a seed of God in him. The neighbours called him Righteous Christa. My mother was an upright woman. Her maiden name was Mary Lago, of the family of the Lagos and the stock of the martyrs. When I came to eleven years of age, I knew pureness and righteousness, for while I was a child I was taught how to walk to be kept pure. The Lord taught me to be faithful in all things, and to act faithfully two ways, viz. inwardly to God and outwardly to man, and to keep yea and nay in all things. For the Lord showed me that though the people of the world have mouths full of deceit and changeable words, yet I was to keep to yea and nay in all things, and that my words should be few and savoury, seasoned with grace, and that I might not eat and drink to make myself wanton, but for health, using the creatures in their service, as servants in their places, to the glory of him that hath created them. Afterwards, as I grew up, my relations thought to have me a priest, but others persuaded to the contrary, whereupon I was put to a man, a shoemaker by trade, and that dealt in wool, and used grazing and sold cattle, and a great deal went through my hands. While I was with him, he was blessed, but after I left him, he broke and came to nothing. I never wronged man or woman in all that time, for the Lord's power was with me and over me to preserve me. While I was in that service, I used in my dealings the word verily, and it was a common saying among people that knew me, if George says verily, there is no altering him. When boys and rude people would laugh at me, I let them alone and went my way, but people had generally a love to me for my innocency and honesty. Now, during the time that I was at Barnet, a strong temptation to despair came upon me. And when I saw how Christ was tempted and mighty troubles I was in, and sometimes I kept myself retired in my chamber and often walked solitary in the chase there to wait upon the Lord. And I wondered why these things should come to me. And I looked upon myself and said, Was I ever so before? When I was come down into Leicestershire, my relations would have had me married, but I told them I was but a lad, and I might guess, and I must get wisdom. Others would have had me into the auxiliary band among the soldiery, but I refused, and I was grieved that they proffered such things to me, being a tender youth. Then I went to Coventry, where I took a chamber for a while at a professor's house, till people began to be acquainted with me, for there were many tender people in that town. And after some time I went into my own country again, and was there about a year, in great sorrows and troubles, and walked many nights by myself. I went to another ancient priest at Mancata in Warwickshire, and reasoned with him about the ground of despair and temptations. But he was ignorant of my condition, and he bid me take tobacco and sing psalms. Tobacco was a thing I did not love, and psalms I was not in an estate to sing. I could not sing. Then he bid me come again, and he would tell me many things, but when I came again, he was angry and pettish, for my former words had displeased him. I brought them scriptures and told them there was an anointing within man to teach him, and that the Lord would teach his people himself. About the beginning of the year 1647, I was moved of the Lord to go into Derbyshire, where I met with some friendly people and had many discourses with them. 
Then, passing further into the peak country, I met with more friendly people, and with some in empty, high notions. And travelling on through some parts of Leicestershire and into Nottinghamshire, there I met with a tender people, and a very tender woman, whose name was Elizabeth Hooton. And with these I had some meetings and discourses. But my troubles continued, and I was often under great temptations, and I fasted much, and walked abroad in solitary places many days, and often took my Bible, and went and sat in hollow trees and lonesome places, till night came on, and frequently in the night walked mournfully about by myself, for I was a man of sorrows in the times of the first workings of the Lord in me. Oh, the everlasting love of God to my soul when I was in great distress. When my troubles and torments were great, then was his love exceeding great. Now, after I had received the opening from the Lord to be bred at Oxford or Cambridge was not sufficient to fit a man to be a minister of Christ, I regarded the priests less, and looked more after the dissenting people. And among them I saw there was some tenderness, and many of them came afterwards to be convinced, for they had some openings. But as I had forsaken all the priests, so I left the separate preachers also, and those called the most experienced people. For I saw there was none among them that could that all could speak to my condition. And when all my hopes in them and in all men were gone, so that I had nothing outwardly to help me, nor could tell me what to do, then, O oh then, I heard a voice which said, There is one, even Christ Jesus, that can speak to thy condition. And when I heard it, my heart did leap for joy. Then the Lord did let me see why there was none upon the earth that could speak to my condition, namely, that I might give him all the glory. For all are concluded under sin, and shut up in unbelief as I had been, that Christ Jesus might have the preeminence, who enlightens and gives grace and faith and power. Thus, when God doth work, who shall let prevent it? And this I knew experimentally. <clears throat> and one day when I had been walking solitarily abroad and was come home, I was taken up in the love of God, so that I could not but admire the greatness of his love. And while I was in that condition, it was opened unto me by the eternal light and power, and I therein saw clearly that all was done, and to be done, in and by Christ. And how he conquers and destroys this tempter, the devil, and all his works, and is atop him. And all these troubles were good for me, and temptations for the trial of my faith which Christ had given me. And the Lord opened me that I saw through all these troubles and temptations. My living faith was raised, that I saw all was done by Christ, the life and my belief was in him. And when at any time my condition was veiled, my secret belief was stayed firm, and hope underneath held me as an anchor in the bottom of the sea and anchored my immortal soul to its bishop, causing it to swim above the sea, the world where all raging waves, foul weather, tempests, and temptations are. But, oh, then did I see my troubles, trials, and temptations more than ever I had done. And therefore none can be a minister of Christ Jesus but in the eternal spirit, which was before the scriptures were given forth. For if they have not his spirit, they are none of his. Yet the work of the Lord went on in some, and my sorrows and troubles began to wear off, and tears of joy dropped from me, so that I could have wept night and day with tears of joy to the Lord, in humility and brokenness of heart. And I saw into that which was without end, and things which cannot be uttered, and of the greatness and infiniteness of the love of God, which cannot be expressed by words. For I had been brought through the very ocean of darkness and death, and through the power and over the power of Satan, by the eternal glorious power 
of Christ. Even through that darkness I was that darkness was I brought, which covered over all the world, and which chained down all and shut up all in death. And the same eternal power of God which brought me through these things was that which afterwards shook the nations, priests, professors, and people. Then could I say I had been in spiritual Babylon, Sodom, Egypt, and the grave. But by the eternal power of God I was come out of it, and was brought over it and the power of it into the power of Christ. And I saw the harvest white, and the seed of God lying thick in the ground, as ever did wheat that was sown outwardly, and none to gather it. And for this I mourned with tears. In the year 1648, as I was sitting in a friend's house in Nottinghamshire, for by this time the power of God had opened the hearts of some to receive the word of life and reconciliation, I saw there was a great crack to go throughout the earth, and a great smoke to go as the crack went, and that after the crack there should be a great shaking. This was the earth in people's hearts which was to be shaken before the seed of God was raised out of the earth. And it was so, for the Lord's power began to shake them, and great meetings were began to have, and a mighty power and work of God there was amongst people, to the astonishment of both people and priests. After this I went again to Mansfield, where was a great meeting of professors and people, and I was moved to pray, And the Lord's power was so great that the house seemed to be shaken. When I had done, some some of the professors said it was now, as in the days of the apostles, when the house was shaken where they were. And at a certain time, when I was at Mansfield, there was a sitting of the justices about hiring of servants, and it was upon me from the Lord to go and speak to the justices, that they should not oppress the servants in their wages. So I walked towards the inn where they sat, but finding a company of fiddlers there, I did not go in, but thought to come in the morning, when I might have a more serious opportunity to discourse with them, not thinking that a seasonable time. But when I came again in the morning, they were gone, and I was struck even blind that I could not see. And I inquired to the innkeeper where the justices were to sit that day, and he told me at a town eight miles off. My sight began to come to me again, and I went and ran thitherward as fast as I could. And then I was come to the house where they were, and many servants with them. I exhorted the justices not to oppress the servants in their wages, but to do that which was right and just to them. And I exhorted the servants to do their duties and serve honestly, etc. And they all received my exhortation kindly, for I was moved of the Lord therein. Thus the work of the Lord went forward, and many were turned from the darkness to the light within the compass of these three years, 1646, 1647 and 1648. And diverse meetings of friends in several places were then gathered to God's teaching by his light, spirit, and power, for the Lord's power break forth more and more wonderfully. Now was I come up in spirit through the flaming sword into the paradise of God. All things were new, and all the creation gave another smell unto me than before, beyond what words can utter. I knew nothing but pureness and innocency and righteousness being renewed up into the image of God by Christ Jesus, so that I say I was come up to the state of Adam which he was in before he fell. The creation was open to me, and it was showed me how all things had their names given them according to their nature and virtue. And I was at a stand in my mind whether I should practice physic for the good of mankind, seeing the nature and virtues of the creatures were so opened to me by the Lord. But I was immediately taken up in spirit to see into another or more steadfast state than Adam's in innocency, even into a state in Christ Jesus that should never fall. 
And the Lord showed me that such as were faithful to him in the power and light of Christ should come up into that state in which Adam was before he fell, in which the admirable works of the creation and the virtues thereof may be known through the openings of that divine word of wisdom and power by which they were made. Great things did the Lord lead me into, and wonderful depths were opened unto me, beyond what can by words be declared. But as people come into subjection to the Spirit of God, and grow up in the image and power of the Almighty, they may receive the word of wisdom that opens all things, and come to know the hidden unity in the eternal being. I was to direct people to the Spirit that gave forth the Scriptures, by which they might be led into all truth, and so up to Christ and God, as they had been who gave them forth. These things I did not see by the help of man, nor by the letter, though they are written in the letter, but I saw them in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by his immediate spirit and power, as did the holy men of God, by whom the holy scriptures were written, Yet I had no slight esteem of the Holy Scriptures, but they were very precious to me, for I was in that spirit by which they were given forth, and what the Lord opened in me afterwards found was agreeable to them. Moreover, when the Lord sent me forth into the world, he forbade me to put off my hat to any, high or low, and I was required to thee and thou, all men and women, without any respect to rich or poor, great or small. And as I travelled up and down, I was not to bid people good morrow or good evening, neither might I bow or scrape with my leg to anyone, and this made the sects and professions to rage. But the Lord's power carried me over all to his glory, and many came to be turned to God in a little time. For the heavenly day of the Lord sprang from on high, and break forth apace by the light of which many came to see where they were. Oh, the rage and scorn, the heat and fury that arose! Oh, the blows, punchings, beatings and imprisonments that we underwent for not putting off our hats to men! For that soon tried all men's patience and sobriety what it was. Some had their hats violently plucked off and thrown away so that they quite lost them, The bad language and evil usage we received on this account are hard to be expressed. Besides the danger we were sometimes in of losing our lives for the matter, and that by the great professors of Christianity, who thereby discovered that they were not true believers. And though it was but a small thing in the eye of man, yet a wonderful confusion it brought among all professors and priests. But, blessed be the Lord, many came to see the vanity of that custom of putting off the hat to men, and felt the weight of truth's testimony against it. Now, after I was set at liberty from Nottingham Jail, where I had been kept prisoner a pretty long time, I travelled as before in the work of the Lord. And coming to Mansfield Woodhouse, there was a distracted woman under a doctor's hand, with her hair loose all about her ears, he was about to let her blood, she being first bound, and many people being about her, holding her by violence. But he could not get no blood from her. And I desired them to unbind her and let her alone, for they could not touch the spirit in her by which she was tormented. So they did unbind her. And I was moved to speak to her in the name of the Lord, to bid her be quiet and still, and she was so. The Lord's power settled her mind, and she mended, and afterwards received the truth, and continued in it to her death. And the Lord's name was honoured, to whom the glory of all his work belongs. Now, while I was at Mansfield Woodhouse, I was moved to go to the steeple house there on a first day, out of the meeting in Mansfield, and when the priest had done, I declared the truth to the priest and people. 
But the people fell upon me with their fists, books, and without compassion or mercy, beat me down in the steeple house, and almost smothered me in, being under them. And sorely was I bruised in the steeple house, and they threw me against the walls, and when that they had thrust and thrown me out of the steeple house, when I came into the yard, I fell down, being so sorely bruised and beat among them. And I got up again, and then they punched and thrust and struck me up and down, and they set me in the stocks, and brought a whip to whip me, but did not. And as I sat in the stocks, they threw stones at me, and my head, arms, breast, shoulders, back and sides were so bruised that I was mazed and dazzled with the blows. And I was hot when they put me in the stocks. After time, after some time, they had before me the magistrate at a knight's house and examined me, where were many great persons, and I reasoned with them of the things of God and his teachings and Christ's, and how that God that made the world did not well in temples made with hands, and of diverse things of the truth I spake to them. And they, seeing how evilly I had been used, set me at liberty. The rude people were ready to fall on me with staves, but the constable kept them off. And when they had set me at liberty, they threatened me with pistols. If I ever come again, they would kill me and shoot me. And they would carry their pistols to the steeple house. And with threatening, I was freed. And I was scarce able to go or well to stand, but re by reason of ill usage. Yet, with much ado, I got about a mile from the town, and as I was passing along the friend fields, friends met me. I was so bruised that I could not turn in my bed, and bruised inwardly at my heart. But after a while, the power of the Lord went through me and healed me, that I was well. Glory be to the Lord for ever. From Coventry, I went to a place called Atherstone, and when I was two miles off, off it, the bell rang upon a market day for a lecture, and it struck at my life, and I was moved to go to the steeple house. And when I came into it, I found a man speaking, and as I stood among the people, the glory and life shined over all, and with it I was crowned. And when the priest had done, I spoke to him, and the people, the truth and the light, which let them see all that ever they had done, and of their teacher within them, and how the Lord was come to teach them himself, and of the sea Christ in them, and how were they to mind that? And the promise that was to the seed of God within them, which is Christ.